Hey guys, Peter here to do an album review today. I'm here to talk to you guys about Anesthetic by Mark Morton, out March 1st on WPP Records and Spine Farm Records. The album has 10 tracks and it's 42 minutes in length. The first thing I confirmed and realized listening to this record was what a talented musician he is and what a wide range of musical styles this guy listens to and really digs. Those two key elements are really the main components that make this album work. From the side of his talent, it's obviously on display from in the whole record, from song 1 to song 10. He created 10 songs that are very unique in nature, that have their own structure, their own DNA, and yet they're all interlinked and interconnected. So you have an album that doesn't feel like 10 individual songs, but rather really has the feel of a full length record, that there are connections between them, at least enough connections to, to be able to allow the record to have a certain fluidity and not to feel like just 10 random songs that are put together in one single album. That to me was very important. As important as that component is the fact that he created songs that really feel like he had the lead singers in mind when he put these songs together. Not only from a musical perspective, but also from a lyrical perspective. Really important, because when you have different singers at every single track, it's really key that you create songs that that bring their tools to the forefront and makes the songs even better. It's really important to, to grab the best that you can out of that musician and extract everything with every single track. The only way you can do that is to create songs that really play to the strong holds of each specific individual. He did that with this record. The, the, the record really has a perfect uh, symbiosis between the music, the lyrics, and then who he picked as the front man of each specific song. That really showcases what a talent, what, what a genius this guy is in order to be able to put a record like this, think of the right people for it, and then create songs that really reflect those choices. Now, from the wide range in music styles, this album definitely has a Lamb of God style flavor to it. But don't think going into it, you're gonna get a Lamb of God record with 10 different singers. That's it. not at all what you're gonna get with this record. Forget about Lamb of God. There are some influences from Lamb of God on the record. There are some musical influences, if you will. There are some songs that kind of reminisce of, of Lamb of God, but this is not a Lamb of God record with 10 different singers. That's not what you're gonna get from this record at all. You're gonna get a record that has a little bit of everything. It has a little bit of that Lamb of God groove metal style, if you will. You're gonna get some songs that are more thrash metal. You're gonna get some that are more country, that have more a country soul vibe to it. So you're gonna really get a little bit of everything. And those songs, the reason why I believe the, the, the songs are so diverse in sound is because he really listens to a wide range of sounds, so he's influenced by a lot of different styles. And then when you're putting these songs together to really fit those musicians, you really have to create songs that fit the musician that you're gonna to invite to be the lead singer on that specific song. So you have to keep all of these moving parts in mind in order to be able to create a record that works, in order for you to be able to not only create 10 songs that work individually, but then to create a record that incorporates those 10 songs in it and still works as a whole, very important. I really feel that some of the guys that he picked for this record were, were not a surprise. I mean, to pick Randy Bly was not a surprise. He was there. Uh, but some of the other musicians kind of caught me. There's a few that caught me by surprise. I I'm going to say Miles Kennedy and Josh Todd. Those two, I was not expecting to see them on this record. I, I just didn't see how you, how could you incorporate those two styles uh, into this record and still make it work, but he did. He, he really was able to get the most out of, their, uh, of the singers and really incorporate them into the record uh, just to perfection. Overall, I really don't feel like categorizing this record as a metal album does it justice. To me, this is a music album. It's not a metal album. It's really a music album. It really has a wide range of sound. There's not a real defined um, genre that you could put this under. This is just a very eclectic sounding record. It's definitely a, a metal album, but I hate categorizing it as such. So to me, this is just a great music album that for any fan of hard rock, of metal, of Lamb of God, of thrash metal, it, all, all of these genres are incorporated. So everybody's gonna find a specific song or a couple of songs they're gonna connect with. But overall, I really hate to put a category to an album that's this diverse. I really feel it's better served to say that this is a great music album. All right, so now as far as songs are concerned, I really want to talk about three songs that for different reasons caught me by surprise. 
First one is The Never, and it features Chuck Billy and Jake Oney on vocals. This is a more thrashy sound kind of metal song. And it has a, still a lot of grooviness. It has a little bit of that Lamb of God grooviness to it. But overall, it really has a thrash metal vibe. And having Chuck Billy on vocals really helps with that. He really brings that thrash metal uh, atmosphere to the forefront in this song. The drums are absolutely killer on this track. It's the perfect partner to give the perfect amount of heaviness to a very groovy guitar riff. And then when you add Chuck's vocals to it, it's it's just the icing on the cake. It really blends it really well to give that that, that thrash metal slash groove metal sound. Uh, it, it has a very dynamic sound in nature. This song is very fluid. Uh, from the get-go, it never stops. It just has a killer momentum. It has a killer sound, very groovy in nature, a very killer, killer sound, and a very killer, killer song. I really like what they did as well with the solo. I love the solo on this song. And it's, it adds a different vibe to the song. It almost breaks the song. It almost stops the aggression that this song has. This song has a lot of aggression in it. And the solo almost stops that aggression a little bit. It gives a little bit more melody to the track. And then once the solo is over, the aggression picks up right back up again. And it just never lets go. Very dynamic song. I really like it. Picking Chuck for this track was genius because he really enhanced the flavor, the sound of the track. Another song that I want to talk to you guys about is Save Defiance featuring Miles Kennedy. What a great track. I, I, this track is absolutely incredible from, from a guitar melodies perspective. I really like what they did. It has a great melody riff and Miles Kennedy's voice fits to that sound, to that guitar riff. It, it's, it's, they're the perfect partners on this track. His voice has so much darkness. It, in this track, I feel like his voice is very haunting. Haunting is perhaps the best word to describe Miles Kennedy's performance on this specific track. I really feel like the haunt, the the the, the feel of, of being haunted by his voice is overall permeating throughout the track, and it gives a little bit of darkness as well to the track, which is a very good counterbalance to how melodic the guitar riff is on this song. I really feel like it's a perfect balanced song and his voice is the perfect partner to that incredible guitar melody that you get on this track. I absolutely love this song. It really blew me away. I was not expecting this. I'm not, I was not expecting the balance between melody, darkness, and, 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 and the sound being so haunting. Absolutely, his vocal delivery was so haunting on this track. I, I was really taken back by all of these different components and how they were able to really work to, well together to create a very good, very different, very unique song. And last but not least, I want to talk to you guys about Back From The Dead featuring Josh Todd. This is an undeniable aggressive song. It, 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 to me, it almost feels like it, it has a lot of rock and roll, pure rock and roll roots in it. The, the guitar riff in it, I mean, it has a heavy guitar riff, but the overall DNA spinal cord of this song is really pure rock and roll. I really feel that. It's almost like a rock and roll song on steroids, if you will. Josh Todd's vocals also fit this song perfectly. He adds that rock and roll vibe to the song. He really brings the, the, the rock to the roll, if you will. He really brings it to the forefront and really enhances that rock and roll flavor that this song has. To me, this is a song that has two different momentums, has two different parts. It has the verses and then it has the pre-chorus and the chorus. It has more of a rock vibe during the, the pre-chorus and the chorus, and it's a little bit heavier during the verses. It's a really cool dynamic that makes the song flow really well. It really enhances his vocal style because he kind of, not that he changes his vocal delivery, but his vocals are slightly different in the heavier momentums of the song in the verses versus the more pure rock and roll, roll parts of the pre-chorus and chorus. So that is a really cool dynamic, and it's something that really gives this song a life of its own. I really overall enjoyed this record. It was a really cool surprise. I was really concerned going in that we were going to get 10 songs all disconnected from each other, all very independent, with, with no thing really holding hands in between them. And that was my main concern going in. That's not what I got. I really got an eclectic sounding record, which I was not expecting. 
but I got a record that doesn't feel like 10 disconnected tracks. It really feels like there is a sense of purpose, there is a sense of fluidity, and there is a sense of going somewhere with these songs, almost like if you're going on a journey through time. So I really enjoyed it from their perspective. I really enjoyed to see how eclectic his tastes were and how that was reflected on his music. And more important, how intelligent he was in creating the perfect songs for the perfect people that he picked to be the lead singers on those songs. Kudos to Mark Morton. I really enjoy an aesthetic, great record out March 1st on WPP Records and Spine Farm Records. But now, let me know your thoughts on this project, favorite songs, what do you think of Mark Morton? Let me know in the comment section below. I'll be reading those and getting back to you. Take care, guys.